interrupt this program for a Wavy News 10 special report. Hurricane Sandy threatening a massive stretch of the U.S. from Virginia to New England all the way to the Great Lakes. We were going to go out to the ocean, but guess what? Lori and Ken, just take a look. The ocean has come to us. It's this is what Sandy looks like now in Seaside Heights. It's My name is Daniel Mercury. I live in uh, Lavalette, New Jersey, technically Ocean Beach, which is Tom's River Township. This is my hurricane or superstorm Sandy story. Upon hearing about the storm and, and the warnings for the storm, we, um, I typically do not really pay close attention to it and, and heed those warnings. Where I live, in, in this part of town, our, our elevation is one of which we're, we're high enough, even if there is storm surge and some flooding, I've, we've never ever been flooded in this, in this area where I am. My elevation, and I live right on the beach, is 22 feet above sea level at the grade, so um, we've never left for the time I've been here, and I've been living here permanently 25 years at this point. So. This was no different. I was staying through the storm. I was hearing all the warnings. And, uh, but it seemed to be a little different once the storm caught on that day, you know, that, that the storm was really starting to hit. I did my riding around. We went down to Ortley Beach and was, you know, and, and this watching the surge and, and how close the water was getting to my house and to the other parts of town. And it seemed a little worse than normal. As the day progressed, the, uh, it, it, you know, there were people, many people evacuating, and where in the afternoon the electric went out, which wasn't because the wind was blowing anything around when, with, with the storm coming, they shut the electric off. You know, as opposed, they think, everybody thinks, oh, the electric went out. They shut it off because there's lines going down and they can't get out and fix them, so to avoid fires, they, they, they shut it down. In the ocean, I'm seeing a lot of debris, a lot of rooftops and decks and stairs and all kinds of stuff that, you know, that I've seen before, but not to the, to, to the extent that I've seen it at this time. And now it's getting dark and I'm going, oh man, I can't see anything. During the day, you can watch and see what's going on and go, and if something, you see something coming, you could deflect it maybe or something is my game plan. It was, it was the most nerve wracking that I've ever, situation I've ever been in because I couldn't see anything. We were able to get up the next morning and go witness all the damage. Uh, there was down our street, water was halfway up our street, which never happens. It's always down by the highway somewhere, which meant every house halfway up my street and in the middle of Route 35 and on the bay side was underwater or had four to five feet of water in, in their houses, which I've never seen before. You couldn't drive around because it was flooded, you know, but I walked the beach and started looking at the damage on, on, on other oceanfront properties that are lower lying than mine, stayed in the Ocean Beach area. Unit one, unit two, unit three, and th which consists of about 5,000 houses in just this, this localized area. By Memorial Day, we hope to have uh, all these, all, these uh, all the debris out of here and the houses that need to be taken down are gonna be down. Anytime there's a catastrophe that, you're, that surrounds you or your family or your neighbors, yeah, you, you have to reflect and, and, you, and, you, and say, well, Jesus, you know, I could have lost my life. Was it worth it? Would I, would, I, would I have evacuated knowing what I know now? I'm still torn about that.